Hello, 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 and welcome to African Vibes with Princess Akwea. I'm at the South Bank in London when a few days' time, Ghanaian British filmmaker Kwesi Owusu will be screening his old but new film, Ama. I know Kwesi from way back in Ghana. We've had a great chemistry working together. So I figured why not come here, spend some time with him, find out about the movie, and find out what he's been up to before the day of the screening. So let's go and find out what Kwesi has to share with us. It's a breezy sunny day in June when the family drive out of London for the refreshing ambience of the English countryside. The kids are excited to get out of the city, explore and run free. Something extraordinary happens when Amma wanders off and gets lost in the forest. She finds a computer disk with startling information. Who left it there? Nobody knows. Can her father and brother be persuaded to do the right thing? So I have found Kwesi. He's sitting here. Yeah. I'm going to come and have a chat. Yeah, yeah. Hello, my friend. Hi, How are hi. you? I'm, I'm great. It's always a vibe to meet you and, you know, chat about all things cultural and, and so on. And it's great. Yeah, it's, it's great. great. You, know, you know, I did my memoir. I wrote my book about my life in Ghana. Yeah. And when it came to Creative Storm, yeah. it was just pure good yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah, I think we did quite a lot. You we know, we were very interesting. We did uh, when we brought John Legend to Ghana. Yes. Luciano we did yeah. a documentary on yeah. her life and that, that, that. And I think we did something on... Uh, with trashy bags, yeah, and you were the presenter. Yeah. Of course, you know, it's always a good, I rate you as one of the you know best presenters we have of media. In Ghana. Oh, thank you very much. And, thank uh, you. I appreciate it's, it's that. It's always a vibe. Yeah, yeah it's it always a vibe. A vibe. Yeah, it really yeah. is a I'm vibe. I'm really glad to yeah. be here. And, uh, Honestly, it's, it's, it felt like it's been like a Ghana reunion last Absolutely. couple of days. It's been great. I've seen so many old faces from Ghana. And the other film we premiered, which I hear was good. I think you did something. I like was that. there that night, my Jeet's movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now it's about your movie, Amma. Well, well yeah. Now, yeah. Amma is not a new movie, but it's being screened. It's not a new movie, but right. we, have, uh, pre we have produced a new version of it, where they call it Director's Cut. Okay. And uh, you know, BFI is the British Film Institute, they are the main center for British film and what have you. And uh, they obviously are celebrating quite an ironic 16 years of the best of African cinema, and they have chosen Ama to open it. So I think that's quite a quite a privilege in a sense uh, and honor. I feel slightly embarrassed in a sense that obviously it would have been great in Accra, you know. Yes. But yes. you know we are we are used to people other people telling us what we have because I think the blinkers are still there as to what it is that we can recognize for ourselves. But that's obviously a wider discussion. But I feel slightly embarrassed that it's a British Film Institute that is doing this. But hey, we always make history by not, not well, always, maybe, always maybe so we I can like do it. Maybe we'll do it in We probably would, would yeah, we'll probably would do that. But it's a new cut. We have actually um, put in quite a range of uh, visuals 
You know, in those days, there were, the, the drone wasn't invented yet, or we're not using it. Before, before you go about the new car, before yeah. you talk about the new cars, yeah. for those who don't know, what is AMA actually about? Okay. And when was the first shot? AMA is a magical realist film, and uh, it was shot in the UK. It's about a Ghanaian family. And AMA is a 12 year old girl who finds a disc, uh, and the disc has startling information about the family. And she manages to use a disc in her computer at an office where her mom works. And it's startling information. The information reveals who she is as an ancestral messenger. And uh, the message is that the father, who's been here, a lawyer for how many years, has to go back to Ghana or else he's going to die. And the brother is a boxer who is training for a big, big fight. And it's up to the little girl to convince the brother not to fight or else he's going to get knocked unconscious. Your guess is as good as mine if they listen to her or not. <laughs> And that's really what the film is about. But it's about um, more generally about migration, about being here and our relationship with home. You know, and there are many Ghanaians, for example, who live here, who are building huge houses in Ghana. They never live in them. You know, the best they get, they pass away and they go and, you know, lay them in the state, then they, they bury them. And then you have caretakers who are more or less living in, in these buildings bringing bills every week. You know, oh, the pipe is broken. Oh, this is that, 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 that. And you are actually servicing them. Yes. But you are here because your life is here. And realistically, you know, you can go on holiday and come back. But so Amma raises all of those issues. In those days, we call it a Samo syndrome. You know, Samolina, you know, those days in the 70s, you know, we didn't have proper fufu powder, so they used Samolina. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so they call the Ghanaians here Samo, Samo people, you know. But uh, here, it's so many people are here, and every day they think about their home, about what it is. They go on holiday, and a lot of them work so hard. Some of them even faint and die. You can see them. You go on the, on the tube six o'clock in the morning. You see them lined up. They're going for cleaning. From cleaning, they go to a midday job. After a midday job, they go to a night job. They don't sleep. And where does money go? After paying their rent, the there's a very little left, and that is, is sent to Ghana. And there are constantly people calling you, oh, my uncle is in Kolebu, my uncle needs blood, oh. my, my nephew broke a leg, my... Much of it, unfortunately, is just calm. It's just a way of making sure that they can live in a tough times in Ghana. But some are genuine. Most of them are really genuine because, you know, uh, not, our institutions don't really don't work too well. Hospitals, you need to buy your own blood, you know. So this film really highlights all of that. And that is why it's to the test of time, because I think the message is almost eternal. So you, you said that it's been reprogrammed, or it's been re-engineered. Yeah, what yeah. have you done? What do you mean by that when you say that? Well, basically, so the film is roughly about over 30 years. And the film really gets old like any, like any person, any human being. So we had to jazz up the colors a bit more. Um, we also put in some additional um, images. And I was saying in those days, we didn't have the drone. So we had these big cranes, and it took a lot of time. There's the opening scene where we use a, a crane to get an overhead shot. And it took us literally almost half a day to do that. We went back to the same scene this time, and within an hour, we had some fantastic images, you know, from the sky, which we have incorporated. You know, so that is quite uh, interesting. And we've also added a few bits here and there. Um, we have added exceptional music. You know, Amma came, Amma, Amma, I want he, oh, da, 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 wonderful music. And we've got, for example, the opening track was done by Pauline Odro. Um, this time around, we also added one by uh, 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 Blue, Nana Blue, you know, the TikToker singer who did a thing with. Um, 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 with one of these hip, hip life um, artists of Ghanaian hip I can't remember the name now. But essentially, that's been really, really interesting. We also paid tribute to the situation we find ourselves here. Um, we filmed one of the scenes on the highest star blocks in West London for the Trellic Towers. Now, that is very close to um, the, uh, the, the uh, tower which got burned down. Grenfell. 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 Yeah, very close. Right. And we shot on the 24th floor. And as I was kind of recutting and doing it, I thought, 
who would have believed that fire had broken out at that time? So what we did was, I went back to that scene and shot all those tower blocks again. And it was really exceptional because in tribute to Grenfell, they have put in some green hearts lit on the tower blocks. So it was great to add those into the new version as a tribute to those who, you know, who, who fell. We also have some shots. The film ends at Carnival, so we also shot some stuff from Carnival and put in there. You okay, know, so did you go to Carnival this year? Oh yeah, it was cool. The Carnival is also really, really cool. It's changed quite a lot, and so but the spirit is still there, and yeah. you know, it was great. Yeah. 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 So after Sunday, after Sunday, well, next Saturday when the movie shown here, what happens with it next? Well, I, I think first of all, the film was premiered in New York, okay, and uh, it, it really did very well, very, very well. And so after here, it's going to go on the on the festival circuit, and then there are quite a few places who, which actually are demanding to show the film. The backdrop, of course, is the fact that the narrative we called magical realism. These days they call it uh, Afrofuturism. It's the same thing. And Afrofuturism has produced Wakanda, the Woman King, and Black Panther, and all of them. And people have gone crazy over it. But this is where it started from, from this. Of course, looking at the differences in time and budget and so on. I mean, Wakanda film is you know, but, but millions or billions. Yes. Yeah, we filmed this for about I think, um, slightly around, I think it was um, uh, nearly one million in today's day. So the difference is, 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 is great. But uh, I think with passage of time, people can appreciate the, the sources. And that is why all these yeah. people are really excited about it yeah. because now Afrofuturism and what kind of stuff is a thing now, yeah. But where did it yeah. come from? Yeah. You know? So let, let's see what happens. A few people calling in and what oh, why can't we do this? Another verse did it that. So I'm quite interested to see how it's all going to pan out. And how's how's the excitement been towards the premiere or the screening on Saturday? Lots of phone calls, lots of publicity. Oh thank you. Thank you. It's been, it? great. it's been great, it's been great, it's almost like, I mean, there's the audience which saw the film then and most of them are all still around and say, okay, where, where did this film go? Because all the messages are very current and so on, so, okay. so that really urged us to do it, myself and uh, my uh, co-director, Patin Yu, to present a director's cut, as it was like, update it to the present, yeah? But there's a whole new audience which hasn't seen it who of course are used to the Wakandas and what have you, well, there'll be a little disappointment in the sense that they are, the sound effects are not going to be as blistering as, you know, because it's through budgets, right? Yes. But what we have done, the computer scene, where Amma received a message, and a whole range of very interesting surprises, I think would really, really surprise a lot of people. So I'm really, really excited. And uh, I think they opened the box office and it's running very well. I just got the um, the brochure now. Brochure. Where am I? I'm just here. Actually, the, the guy at the, at the um, reception desk was telling me, you need to come to the movies. I said, my oh. friend's <laughs> movies in there. I know all about it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's been. So people, so people are talking about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Will Ni Pate be coming? And uh, fortunately not. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be here in spirit in a very big way. Yes. Whatever I do has its presence, its resonance. So this is the. This is it here. Yeah, this is here. And uh, yeah, it's going to circulate. It's really, really exciting. It's really, really exciting. Uh, but I just wish, you know. It will be like a crapper uh, where we are. Yeah. But hey, yeah. It, it's, it's great. It, it will... Well, maybe Juliet and Black Star Film yeah. Festival can do something. Yeah, oh, yeah, with yeah, yeah. It. We hope, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, it's going to go to Ghana. Yeah. When it actually opened in Ghana in uh, 1991, it was a box office hit. The biggest yeah. grossing Ghanaian film ever. Wow. You know, oh, yeah, people yeah. were queuing. Uh, anybody who knows, but I'm at that time would tell you. The songs were on, on, on air. I'm, I'm, I was new, da, da, da. We were in town, we did all the queues around, um, you know, the uh, 
all the cinemas, places to watch a film. And a lot of discussion. And I tell you, the most interesting discussion centered around the computer disk. So people were saying, ah, if our ancestors have to speak to us, would they use a computer disk? <laughs> you know, and we had to come in and explain why. And we said, look, our ancestors live with us and they're gone. If, for example, you know, I drop dead now, I'm an ancestor. If I want to speak to you right now, how would I do it? Would I go and get a horse whip and be chanting, or would I appear in your DM? You mm -hmm. tell me. Or your face. In, in, in this modern technology, <laughs> you come in my DM. I would, yeah, absolutely. Or your Facebook or your WhatsApp. Yeah. And I said, oh, Ikua, what's up? Yeah. Guess what? You know, I had some money to give you. I couldn't pay you, but hey, you know, go here and get it, whatever. Yeah, it yeah. would be. So, but it, it bases. The whole fact is that we have a certain concept of our culture, which is very archaic. It's like frozen in a museum. You go to different African countries, they come out with their policies. What is it about culture we really need to do? So, so we have to preserve, which means <laughs> you put in cold storage in a museum. So and if you come and look, oh yeah, 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 and that's what we tried to do. And there was a lot of discussion. Oh, so, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So we need to embrace the contemporary and make it relevant to us. You know. An interesting thing is that Amma is going to be there, the, the woman who played Amma. Right. So I was going to ask you the actress who be in town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was um, she was 11 then when she played. Now she's uh, you know, obviously a big woman. Now. Yes. So, I'll be very happy to hear how she actually went through that process. She was very, very young then, you know, and uh, what for me was interesting was that they captured her, her in her innocence. It's not, it's not like she knew all of this about her ancestral, you know. So when she got a message, you could see she was really in awe, you know, and I really want to hear from her, looking back, what it all meant for her. And then, of course, we're going to have Enima Misa as well. Okay. She played okay. Amma's mother in the film and she will be here and it will be great it will really really yeah, be I think I have to be here because yeah, yeah. it's like I mean I, I met an, uh, an Ima, KSM sister right yeah yeah yeah, yeah I met yeah. her in Ghana many many years ago I mean ago. she's one of our greatest actresses I she mean, is you know, she really is love brood in an African court yes oh, she was beautiful she was great yeah you know and then uh, in Amara as well she was Amara's yeah. mother yeah and then and there were there were other um, other actresses you know um, yeah. there's a woman who who uh, who plays um, um, like a, a priestess and uh, she actually also played in a uh, Harley Garimas film Sankofa okay and, yeah. and so on yeah. a few of them unfortunately have passed yeah. you know and that's all a tribute Malcolm Fredericks was a big you know actor here Roger is so around you know thank God and then uh, we have uh, Thomas Bastiste he also has passed. And of course, uh, not, to, not to forget um, uh, Neil Mahanta. Again, Neil Mahanta is one of our greatest. Uh, he passed only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he plays an uncle who comes over from Ghana to visit the family. And lots of jokes, lots of jokes. You know this thing about sometimes people die in Ghana and they visit their relatives in, in, uh, in London. They don't know they've died, but so there's a test, you know, if anybody visits you from Ghana, you need to give them a test to make sure they're not dead, right? So you give them a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens? Well, if they drink, then it means they are not dead. But okay. if, if they disappear, it means then they, they don't. have false pretenses. <laughs> so there's, a <laughs> there's a scene there where they give him a glass of water and everybody is like looking hard whether he's going to drink the water or disappear. You know? Lots of jokes, lots, lots, of, yeah, lots, of, lots, lots of, of Ghana jokes in there. Yeah. So all the, all the actors you worked with, they were based in the UK already back in those days? We actually made an effort to bring all the Ghanaian actors from Ghana to okay. come and perform here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We had a little fight with the uh, authorities. Uh, so, oh yeah, they, all the actors are here. Why do you have to go and bring people from Ghana? I said, excuse me, 
these are the people we know can play a part. You know, a little tassel there, but we brought new man hunter, and we brought the Nimamus, I think, was here and that. You know, we have got all of them here. Yeah. And then combine them with the best actors and actresses here to give that, because it's not, it wasn't simply a, a film about Ghana, it's about you know, England being here and that experience. I'm, a, I'm always a little English girl, yeah. you know, in a sense. So, I obviously, being a writer, also had to dwell a lot on my own experience living in England, you know, and it goes by me. My parents got married here in 48, 1948. My grandfather was in Cambridge in 1910. So, this place is not strange to us, in a sense. I mean, of course, I was born in Ghana, went to Addis Ababa, came to LSE. Da, 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 da. But this whole idea that we are living in some strange land and blah blah, it's just not. We just have to define our own place within this landscape. Yeah. You know, so there's a scene at the beginning where Amma finds the uh, computer disk. And the computer disk is actually in an area which looks very much like an African forest. You know, when you see it, you would know. You know. And one of the frightening things was we entered this place because we had gone there the night before and decorated it. Even with a Kumfanochi sauce sticking somewhere there, the talismans that you name it. And we took Amma in there and she started running away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where have you brought me? Well, this is very strange. I said, oh, relax, relax. <laughs> so, you really created a, a realistic scene. It, re it really had to. And then we, yeah. we, you know, we, we imagined this was like an African. Um, Encampment which had been deserted because even the fire was burning, but the people had gone. So, yeah. where have they gone? So, there's an African presence in, in England, you know, in the <laughs> Bearwood Forest, you know. But the way we created all of it, it was just even though it's appetition bottles, you know, I mean, those guys <laughs> authenticity were, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that pure, the carry shells, every, all of that had to be and, there. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the disc, computer disc, was in an amulet, you know, one of these amulets, hanging on a tree. So she took it, she did it, and then, and then she opened it and saw this golden disc. Okay, and then she put it back and then hung it around her neck. Yeah. And there are some scenes in the church, you know, and so on, uh, kind of a more African-oriented Christian church where, you know, they sing and, and do all of that stuff. And, you know, it's, it's kind of quite interesting. Yeah. There's a boxing scene as well, you know, where Joe is not unconscious, which we filmed. I mean, we had a lot of collaboration. So he just gave us, he just told us that he, he went for the boxing then. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah I let that go out. But yeah, yeah, yeah he, of course, he didn't listen to the young girl. Mm. He knows, I mean, I mean, how can I go to my, my coach and say, my little girl, my little sister says, you know, something about ancestral something so I shouldn't fight. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense to you know, because that is his chance, you know, is uh, what's interesting was that we actually got Frank Bruno and a couple of others to give us their voices into okay. the into that into that particular scene to reenact those voices into that particular scene. And Joe was knocked unconscious. And exactly around the same time you had uh, Watson getting knocked unconscious by um, Ben. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that, yeah. that was when he had to go into the wheelchair and his, it, that was his it last was fight. Around the same time. And actually we invited them to the premiere because we had a premiere um, in the West End somewhere. Um, ben came, but um, Watson but, was but in, a, Watson. in a wheelchair, so yeah. he couldn't come. So that, I that, that. Yeah, that, wow. that really raised a particular issue about boxing. Mm. It's, a, it's an outlet for you know, kind of young or black kids, but you know, it's about brain damage. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, and meet boxers in their old age. And so. Yeah, it's a violent sport, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. to the brain. I mean, yeah. you know, we get numb. So again, it raises that whole issue. And when um, UK, the, the uncle who visits, um, meets a family, guess what videotape he has in his, in his bag? It's a videotape about uh, a boxing match between Joe Tete. Huh? Mm -hmm. Joe Tete and, uh, and Sugar Ramos. Okay. 
and that was a classic fight. Any Ghanaian who grew up in Ghana, late 60s, what have you knows about this fight? It was a classic fight, Joe Tete and Sugar Ramos of Cuba. Wait, it's, wait, two parts were in Ghana? In Ghana, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big, big, big fight. Before Muhammad Ali, all of that. Rambo all, the Jungle. All of that, before all of that. I big, see. Big yeah, big, big fight. But we had a clip which we showed it in the film. And uh, Joe Tete was just marvelous. You know, he gave a few knockouts, punches. The guy got up and tried to come back. He didn't know, you know, faced him out and just knocked him out. And we were, <laughs> <laughs> So we, we thought, oh yeah, if we're talking about boxing, we have to show that, hey, you know, it's not only the Muhammad Ali's and Madison Square Garden, but Ghana had a very classic history of boxing. Apart from the Joe Tete, you know, we yeah. had Joe Sugar Ramos, we had Floyd Robertson, he was also a featherweight champion, you know, and then after that, you have, of course, Azuma Nelson, I Porte and the others. I mean, you go to... Uh, to Osu and uh, Jamestown, you know, that's the center, that's the cradle. Yeah, Bukum, Bukum, oh, that's, yeah. that's my place. Yes, Apparently my people are from Bukum, yeah, my, yeah. my paternal grandfather's yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. Are, they are tough, you know, boxers, you know, that's where they all came from. Yeah. Of course, Bukum back when the others would make it sound like it's all about jokes and so they worked very hard and they were world champions. I mean, now yeah. I don't know what state play we are at at this point, but you know, it's about bringing all of these memories into a film that has different messages which I think put together put us in a different light completely very different from the usual oh is there a coup, is there not a coup oh is there, you know these politicians are chopping our money all of that, absolutely important you know um, but the, the kind of imagery we see from, from even within Ghana it's missing of all of these complexities, yeah. which can enrich us and empower us. Anybody who sees Amar Kamba, I say, hey, Charlie, yeah, you know, not in any propagandist, pedantic way, but these are the things, you know. Yeah. What's also interesting about Amma was that we all grew up uh, believing that anything about ancestral, this is all about paganism, all about witchcraft, blah, blah, you know. And I said, oh, excuse me, I mean, people, yeah, people even worship. Christian Christianity in a very African way. You know, we, we sing and we pray that da, 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 you can incorporate it, da, da, da. but at the end of the day, we also believe in an ancestral visitation. You know, a lot of us uh, are named after you know this ancestral visitation um, concept. You know, Ababio. Ababio means you come back. Yeah. You know, and there are people who are born and they are the marks of their fathers they remember. And where does that come from? And all of that, I don't know how that all that happens, I'm so learning. But the bottom line is that they have denigrated all of that, which is us, which can empower us into witchcraft, paganism, and all the rest of it. So we had to unpack all of that and redefine that in a way that people follow here. You know, it's also relevant, it's modern, and it's contemporary. Yeah. So we had to do it. It was fun as well. In myself and Quartier, we sat there, we were laughing, like, Charlie, we we'll put this one inside. Where is Sunny? You know, a crab boy. That's, that sounds like him. Oh, yeah. That sounds like yeah. him. <laughs> you know. And he, yes. I mean, I paid tribute to him because he introduced me to professional yeah. film. He had just come out of. A film school, you know, with uh, excellent honors and what have you. He had then made a film which is now a classic, you know, You Hide Me, yeah. you know, which I think now is, is huge and big in terms of all of this campaign to bring back African artifacts. And then that film was the one that opened our eyes. He, he simply went to the British Museum and managed to film all of these boxes in their museum full of African artifacts. They didn't even have space in the main museum. To, to display them. Mm. So I always say, Kwate, how did you manage to go on the local in Kebwake? I said, up to now, I've still to get a full story, but he's a fascinating guy, and I, I just think that, you know, he should really be honored a bit, much, much more than he has been. Yeah, and I he's agree. Done, he's done, you know, so much. And I really We agree. did a couple of other films. What's interesting, we did a film on um, African cinema, Wagadugu. That's also the next project that I want to resuscitate and bring to bear. You know, unfortunately, all our film assets are here with the BFI. I mean, 
the point about it is that of course you say we can assist them in you know in pristine condition and so on but again wouldn't it have been great if i had my film assets in accra yeah. that i can sit in the in the sun sunshine somewhere on the veranda there and, and keep talking excitedly about it but i would be here to do it because that's where the stuff is so that's another project that i think i'll be working with him on uh, we filmed all the interesting things about African cinema in Ouagadougou in the, in the 80s. And one of the films that really inspired us to do something around Amma was a film by uh, Suleiman Sisse um, called Yilen. Again, it was a magical realist film. And uh, there's this protagonist who managed to journey to the source of African you know, knowledge and traditions. Of course, his terrain was a desert, scorching desert. Mm. But with Amma, we had to use the terrain of, uh, of England. You know, the underbelly of England, there are a lot of people who can hide, you know, kind of uh, races in the snowbury and what have you. Mm. I mean, one of the reasons why um, UK, the, the uncle who visits, decided to go to Ghana was a fact, was a scene at, in an English pub where he got into a fight with these English blokes who were, I mean, one English girl comes in and you know they have a dance and this English bloke says, "Why have we got a wing up?" You know they start fight, and as one of the craziest fight I've actually directed, which we put in that film, and and to really bring the the point about the so-called trophy, which was a white woman that they are all fighting for, mm. we decided to replicate the um, imagery of Marilyn Monroe. So, of course, somebody, a Marie Monroe lookalike, yeah. who was who played a girl there. So when it was shown in uh, in America, I said, are you sure this is Marie Monroe? So I said, hey, please, so you watch it. But we did it, yeah, on purpose, actually. You know, because everybody thinks, oh yeah, African people, they come in England, only come and take their rubbish, whatever. But hey. You know, Marilyn Monroe was, was the eye of, of the Kennedys, or the, you know, you name it, you know. I love Marilyn Monroe, actually. I love when, when you come to my house, I have certain pictures of my world. Kwame Nkrumah, Grace Jones, I Thomas Sankara. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe is the only Caucasian person you see on my wall. I, I actually her. love her. I love her. They try and downgrade her significance, but she was a, actually a first lady in this guy's She was way. smart as well. She played the game. Wow. You know, she was vulnerable. But she was smart. Yeah. I really like Marilyn. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you were after her, and then I don't know how she died, but we yeah, were suspicious. Hmm. You know, and all of that. We have it's our suspicions. Oh, well. yes. <laughs> it wasn't your natural death, I'll tell you that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it was all that elements are kind of in there too. So it's not simply, you know, the usual one little Ghanaian film. You cut out the whole world and then you kind of present yourself as some kind of exotic kind of you know experience but it's incorporated and made very relevant you know to what it is that we're all experiencing now yeah and you, it, you it, sound so passionate when you're talking about your movies <laughs> you, you love what you do i really do i really do and i i i i, I think it's also about empowering yeah. yourself to love what you do irrespective of what it is that you know and every day is an exciting day you know it doesn't mean it's easy i've always done my own movies work for myself you give me money i do it you don't i find a way to do it but there's so many different ways but i uh, entered filmmaking from being a poet i used to be a poet with african dawn so my approach to to film is uh, like that poetic thing rather than hitting people on the head and uh, you know with a little empathy and you can get people you know into people's mind much faster than of course sometimes you have to you know kind of hit hard and like in an advert and what have you here people's minds are so clogged up so much that somebody got to hit their head with some yeah. fast quick da 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 but for our kind of people empathy is, is really really key you know because they, why should they listen to you and not somebody else? If you think you are better than them, then go and talk to somebody else. I mean, mm. that's the attitude. Mm. But if you can level and have a basis of communication, then say, okay, we are all in this together. Let's see about that. And then they can, they can, yeah. So that passion is it's informed. It's not, you know, also not being naive about, you know, the film industry is hard. This visiting uncle decided to return home after this incident in a London pub. Give a one for me. 
Put it inside. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. And thanks a lot for what you're doing. I mean, you know, it's been. I, I saw that clip you did when those guys drove from um, Accra. Ah, uh, yes. And that was great. That, that's really, really great. Yeah, they, they did good. They did good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They made us feel so proud. There was yeah. a bit of excitement when yeah. they came to town. I, yeah. I was really amazed at the British media never caught up on it it was almost like oh okay they went to bbc they did an interview at the bbc, BBC but I mean, at the end of the day who if have... i see something on on daily on the you know on the standard on the popular media they should be on all the you know morning shows they well you know whoever desert. organized the part here should have contacted i tell you if people are interested they'll pick it up like oh you were there that's you very got true. interested in that's very true yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's it's big news to you you know yeah. of course they knew you may be seeing you yeah, of course yeah, in the yeah. morning show of course it's not their people it's not like some British guys drove all the way from you know london to accra and yeah. they'll come and talk because it's them is it that that's how news speculates you know so of course yeah. i'm glad the ghana um news industry i think took it very seriously i saw yes. some really humorous one with kwami sepakai and that. it was be be beautifully done and so on and so forth yeah. and all the jokes about the ghana card and the, the, the bottom line all these guys they have foreign you know visas and what yeah they you. did they, so what people, happened to our ghana card? <laughs> <laughs> because people ask me did they come with that visa i'm like no of course that's their visa they to have come. to organize all of that yeah. how have you fantastic fanta the actual show ghana card and uh, they had a Tough time, you know. I think it was uh, is it Mo uh, Mauritania or somewhere. Mauritius, no. Mar Mauritania or Morocco. Mauritania. 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 And Mauritania. Those guys don't joke, man. Yeah. yeah Bloody Mauritania. races, they don't joke. And they went, they went up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they detained them, what have you. And then they also some stories that some of them didn't make. The only woman <laughs> had to return. I wanted full story. No, I think that was her original plan to stop at Morocco. I don't think she yeah, plans to come all the way. The journey, the, 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 the trophies in England. So why decide you go to go halfway and return? Responsibilities, hey, all, and work. <laughs> you know, who knows? That is why we need to know more. What kind of responsibilities, uh, you know, defies you to not to get to there? Bills to pay. She's not. She's not self-employed. The, the guys like Saka and Kwabena or Kwame. They were all self-employed. That's why it's important to delve a bit more because the next time around we want the woman in at the final line. Yeah. You know, and whatever it will take to make sure. Otherwise, that the story is always incomplete. So, you know, all these blokes they come. Hey, hey, uh, the only woman had bills to pay. I mean, excuse me. You, you know the score. You well, next pay. next time I want to join. You should them. join. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was so funny because they said you the should join. they said the women didn't join them because they didn't have time for women. They, I need to fix my oh, weave. I need to do. I'm and I'm like, take, no, no, it's not ridiculous. I'm like, take natural women. Not your women. We don't care about wigs and makeup. We wake yeah, but, up and yeah, how we are. On this kind of journey, on this kind of journey, what what's it about makeup? I mean, you you are entering the Sahara Desert. Yeah, but you know the women that wear the makeup and the wigs, they don't have time to go on these journeys because they need three hours to fix their no, hair. No, but you fixing so your hair to, on the journey for what? Because that's how they they no. need they need the wigs and the wigs. They're insecure without it. No. The sex protective style. Anybody who embarks on this journey will know it's of a particular type. Yeah, it's going to it's, be it's only natural head women. It, it's whatever, whatever you know. They, they could have the scarf or what have you. And the, the bottom line, you got to be prepared for it and make sure this is a it's a hard, 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 hard journey. Yeah. You are in the desert. You know the, the, yeah. the wind is blowing. Is it that's in your eyes? And they want the wind to blow the long cascading no, no. Are, Caucasian Brazilian hair. Yeah, well, that's well. what they want, so they can flick it nicely like this. It doesn't happen you like know. that. But any any of them would know that that, that would not yeah. be the expectation. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I mean, naturally, yes, I agree that. But, but the bottom line is that, you know, you probably need a cup, a good, good The cup. bottom line is when these guys are being the next trip, you make it to there. the natural head women. <laughs> <laughs> We're oh, less stressed. Of, uh, it, it's wonderful to see you again. And you too, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Let, let's keep up and, we'll be talking. Uh, and good luck to you. Listen, listen to her. She's, she's fantastic. She's great. Thank you. Thank you. She's Thank great. you. Natural yeah. hair, everything. And he's down. and he is a legend. <laughs> yeah, seriously. When it comes to movie making, I'm sitting next to a legend. Um, um, it's um, my honor and my pleasure to know you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you. This fight will be your last. How do you know that? I mean, what are you doing?
guys hanging out with Kwesi Owusu and spending some time at the South Bank. is here and what can I say the excitement is electrifying absolutely electrifying your brother will win no Joe he's got no chance in blazes now he... I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I have join me next week for more African vibes